on one of my many visits to a nursing home in the memory care unit, which is where people who have Alzheimer's or dementia are cared for. As is often the case, before I engage any of the folks in the memory care unit in conversation, I always like to ask them, do you know who I am? Because as is the case due to their illness, usually they don't remember me from one visit to the next. And so I approached this one lady and I said to her, as I usually do, do you know who I am? And she says, no. But if you ask at the front desk, they can tell you. <laughs> this question of do you know who I am is one that we should all pose to ourselves. Do I know who I am? The second reading for this Sunday gives us the answer that each and every one of us is a child of God, first and foremost. And as our Holy Father Pope Francis reminds us all people, even atheists are children of God, not just Catholics or Christians, but all human beings are beloved children of God. That is illustrated to us today in the gospel when Jesus says, I have other sheep who are not of this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. This should be good news for all of you who are worried about your children, who are worried about your family members, who may have strayed from the fold, they have been baptized, they've had their first communion, they've had their confirmation, and now they no longer practice the faith, and you're worried, and you come to me and you tell me that. You say, Father, what's going to happen to my family members who no longer practice the faith? Or what's going to happen to this or that person in my life or that I know that says they're an atheist or an unbeliever or an agnostic? The worst thing you can do is keep moving your mouth at them, yapping away, trying to teach them something as if something you're going to say is going to convince them. Spend less time talking to them about God and spend more time talking to God about them. God is after them because God loves them, as God is after each and every one of us. We know that from the Bible, from the very beginning, that God is after each and every one of His children. And God is after your children, your family. He's pursuing them. We know that from the very beginning of the Bible. Was it Abraham? that went after God? No, God went after Abraham. 
Was it Moses who went after God? No, it was God who went after Moses. And the prophets, did they pursue God? God pursued them. And then in the New Testament, did Mary go after God? No, God went after Mary and chose her and Joseph and the 12 apostles. Jesus saw them and called them. He pursued them and he said, I have chosen you, not you that have chosen me or Paul, the apostle. It was God who went after him and God is after you and God is after yours. Why? Because as much as he loves you, he loves your family members. He loves each and every one of us so very much that he died for us because he did not wish to live without us. You are a beloved child of God. And as his child, he wants to be your father. Not only does he want to be your father, but he wants to be your shepherd. He wants to shepherd you. But as his child, do you hear his voice? Are you allowing yourself to be led by God? To be found by him? Are you allowing yourself to be shepherded by the shepherd who loves you? You know, when I first moved here to Las Vegas, I didn't know my way around town very well. And in my first parish assignment here, St. Joseph, husband of Mary, there were many sick calls. I had to go and anoint many, many people who were dying. And whenever the sick call would come in, the secretary would give me the address, because that's all I asked her for. I didn't ask her for directions. And the reason why, unlike some of the other priests who would ask her for directions as well, and she would print them out, I just asked for the address. And the reason why I asked for the address is because I have something that most people today have, and that is a smartphone. And all I would do was put the address into the smartphone and have it guide me with a voice that speaks to you. You know how it, it speaks to you and says, turn left, turn right, recalculating. <laughs> and so I put the address into my smartphone and allowed it to guide me. And I was driving and driving and driving and, you know, I'm going to see somebody who's dying, so I'm kind of frantic to get there because I'm, I'm always hoping that I get there before the person dies so that I can anoint them and give them the absolution for their sins, what is known as the last rites. That's why you call for the priest so often. And so I'm always frantic to get there before the person passes. And I'm thinking to myself, this is, this is not right. I'm driving and driving and driving. And this is taking me somewhere where I shouldn't be because it's been too long. And you know, each parish in Las Vegas is part of a zone 
So each parish has its zone, and only within that zone do priests from a particular parish go and anoint people who are sick or dying. And so I said, this is taking me out of the zone, so this is not right. But I continued to listen to the voice. Because I said, this is a smartphone. This is a smartphone. And the smartphone took me in the wrong direction. And so I was frantic, put the smartphone down and began to drive, hurrying because I had other appointments as well that I needed to make. And this was already a long time, and I, I was worried that the person would die. And so my foot became a bit heavy on the, on the gas pedal. And as I'm frantic, all I can see in the rear view mirror is... <laughs> It was a police officer, and he stopped me. And he gets out of the car, and he comes to the window, and he says, why were you driving so fast? And I said, well, I'm a priest, and I pointed to my collar, OK? <laughs> I said, I'm trying to go and anoint somebody who's dying. And I got lost. Well, how did you get lost, he says. I said, I, I was listening to the voice on my smartphone. And the police officer looked and said, now, dear father. <laughs> I guess that smartphone isn't all that smart, is it? <laughs> and then proceeded to write me a ticket. <laughs> Smartphones are only as smart as the people who use them. Because I put in the wrong address. Rather than Harrison Street, it was, I put the first words and then it, it kind of corrects you and it took me to Harrisburg Street. <laughs> and I ended up getting lost because I listened to that voice in the world when we listen to the voices in the world that we may think are smart, we too can get lost. When you listen to the voices that appear to be smart, like the voice of the casino, which many of you listen to because you think they're smart because you know they're, they're big and, and uh, they appear to be rich, and these are the words that you listen to. But they're not so smart, are they? Those voices. Because you end up losing your life there. Or the voices in your life who may tell you that you're ugly or not smart enough or not intelligent enough or not good enough, and that take you down the road of depression, like the 16-year-old whose funeral I had not too long ago, who committed suicide because his girlfriend had left him. And he was listening to that voice. She left him all these messages telling him how horrible he was. And he listened to that voice or the people who fall into anxiety and depression by listening 
to their exes or the young people today and not so young people who listen to the voices in Hollywood that tell you that the road to fulfillment in life is the road of fame, money, and fortune. And you listen to those voices and look how they end up many times on drugs, having all sorts of plastic surgery, having all sorts of lifts, chin lifts, nose lifts, even butt lifts, all sorts of lifts. These are the voices out there where the voice of the Lord is the voice to joy in our life. The shepherd, the good shepherd, your shepherd, wants you to have joy in your life. He made you for joy. You were made for joy, not for happiness, because happiness is here one day and gone tomorrow, like that family that lost a 16-year-old to suicide. They're not happy. Or when you're diagnosed with cancer, you're not going to be happy. Or when you lose your job, you're not going to be happy. Happiness is here today and gone tomorrow. But joy is lasting, and we are called to rejoice always in the resurrection of our Lord, in our faith, in the gift of our faith, in the fact that we have all been saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus. As we heard in the first reading today, He saved us. Saved us from what? From death? Yes. But from gloom, from misery. He saved us. The word salvation means health. It comes from the Latin word salus. And that's what God wants you to have in your life. He wants you to be healthy even in the midst of all that you go through, in the midst of your problems and issues and the stuff that you face on a daily basis, He wants you to be a healthy individual, to have joy. I always like to think of joy, which is the gift of God in our life, as J-O-Y. Take that word apart. J-O-Y. Here's your recipe for joy. J. Jesus. J stands for Jesus. O stands for others. Y stands for you. Jesus first, then others, and then you. The world tells you something opposite, doesn't it? It's all about you. If it makes you happy, do it for yourself. You don't like your husband? Get rid of him. You don't like your life? Go to the doctor and get some pills because you can kill yourself now, you know, euthanasia. You can end it all. It's all about you, what you want. Isn't this the message in the world? Choices. I choose to have joy in my life. And to have joy, I have to have Jesus in my life. And I have to do His will, keep His commandments, all of His commandments, not just the ones I want to keep, but all of them. 
You know, Jesus was asked at one point for which one was the greatest of all the commandments. And didn't he give us the recipe there? He said, love the Lord your God, Jesus, and love your neighbor, others, as yourself. That is the recipe. And that is what we pray for. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son for you and for me. Why? Because he wants us to have life. He wants us to be healthy. He came to save us. And he wants us to have joy today and forever. Amen.